Hello and welcome to our virtual Thermomix cooking class titled Delicious on a Budget. Tonight's theme is all around saving money in your Thermomix. We're going to make several different dishes to show you how you can do that. At the moment we have 36 months interest free which works out at $16.30 a week. So um, quite affordable in your budget but tonight we're going to show you how you can make back that $16 each week so that your Thermomix can pay for itself. Uh, and go on to save you money as well. Now there's several different reasons why people do invest in a Thermomix. The main reason I hear is to save time. The Thermomix is super fast and it does, it just saves you so much time. It's just amazing for your lifestyle. Um, another great reason why people buy a Thermomix is to cook healthy dishes where you know every ingredient in it so that you can cut out additives and preservatives. Um, other reasons are about taste, convenience, um, getting gourmet textures that you can't get by hand, um, being energy efficient, and then saving money. Tonight is all around saving money. If you have questions about all those other reasons or benefits of a Thermomix, please get in touch with your consult or myself, and we're happy to help explain how that all works. Um, but yes, tonight we've got this cooking class. Now, I just need to let you know, the cooking class um, finished a little while ago and in the beginning I had forgotten to press record. So I missed recording my first recipe that I made and it was these cheese and spinach scrolls that you can see here. And because I had two batches of dough, if you, if you go to the very end of this video and wait till after I've wrapped it up and said goodbye and everyone was logging off, Stay tuned and I will show you how to make these scrolls. Um, it's quite an easy technique, but um, it's good once you've seen it done, then you can go, oh, okay, I can do that. Um, so then the second dish we made was this tomato risotto with lemon ricotta stuffed chicken breasts, which is on cookie dough and is, looks super delicious. I haven't made it yet, but I will be now. The lovely Yolanda from our team made this for us tonight. And, um, in just a second, you'll, it'll cut to her. But the very first bit of the recipe was showing us how she makes the ricotta stuffing that goes in the chicken. Um, I'm going to be emailing out the recipes, but I'll just tell you, in the stuffing is cheese, parsley, mint, lemon zest, ricotta cheese, salt, pepper, and that's it. And so the Thermomix mixes it all together. And, um, Another tip we spoke about was that you can make your own ricotta. That's another cost saving in your Thermomix. Um, and another one along that line, which I wanted to show is that you can make your own yogurt. Now to make a kilo of this vanilla creamy thick yogurt costs me <laughs> around $1.50 for a kilo. Um, you know, when you buy it um, at the store, it's around $7. So, and this is, this is delicious and um, it's a great, another great saving that you can make in your Thermomix. Um, I can't make it for you in a class because it takes hours to um, ferment. Um, but yeah, so that's just another example. There's little examples throughout this evening cut into the recipes. But yes, just in a second, it's gonna to cut to Yolanda and she's just made the stuffing and she's putting it into the chicken. Um, and then she's going to make the risotto for us and the rest of the class will run smoothly at the very end. It'll finish and then hold on and you can cut to me showing you how to make these scrolls. So sorry about that unprofessional recording, but that's just what happened. Okay, over to Yolanda. Um, large, I have had some recently that were huge and I did have to bake them a little bit longer simply because the size of the chicken breast. All right, almost done with that and I'll be in the oven and we'll get on to our risotto. So the next step is to clean and dry my mixing bowl, but tonight I'm not doing that because I have a second bowl. Yay, there it is, straight in. So that's the beauty of having a second bowl. When you're doing something like this and you're time poor, you're not washing up one bowl and drying it before you can get on to your next step. So this way I can get straight into it. 
at the moment, if you would like a second bowl for your Thermomix, you can get one as a host reward from hosting a cooking experience. And we are doing those virtually at the moment. So um, it's a great thing to have if you want to suddenly swap your bowl out and make something that you need for your recipe. Or if you want to be able to do like I've done now and save some time in between your steps when you're cooking something. All right, in the oven with this, back in a moment. All right, here we go, on to our risotto. So what we're going to put into this is a shallot and a garlic clove and some flat leaf parsley, once again, out of my garden. Pop all that in there. And we're also going to add in a little bit of olive oil. So I'm just using a light olive oil. And I do love that these scales um, on the TM6 weigh to with one gram of accuracy. Um, I find that really nice when I'm dealing with things like oil and vinegar and that sort of thing. Oh, well, a little bit extra, never mind, that won't hurt. All right, next, measuring cap into the mixing bowl lid, on that goes. And we're just gonna chop that speed five. It's gonna quickly scrape down the sides. We're going to chop it again much faster than doing all this by hand actually we're going to saute this now so at about three minutes we're going to saute it at 120 degrees um, this is another really lovely thing about the thermomix you can walk away now and do something else for that three minutes while your herbs are sauteing beautifully and the oil with the garlic starting to develop the flavor that's going to make your dish taste so good and that's a wonderful thing about guided cooking, that you can safely walk away, as I said, gather up your next ingredients, work out what you need to do next. And that's something I might just show you here now. Um, on the TM6, up the top here next to the next button, there's three little dots. You can actually push those three little dots and pull up the scales, and you could weigh something for the next part of your um, recipe, if that's what you needed to do. Or in the same place there where those three little dots are, you can go to recipe detail. And that's when you can see the next steps in your recipe. So if you're not sure what's coming next, you can have a sneak peek in that time when your machine's cooking, work out what you've got to do next, and then get on with your recipe. So I just come back here and I go continue, and then I'm back into my recipe. So I think that's a fantastic feature of the Thermomix. I haven't got a book in front of me where I'm losing my place the whole time. It's all on the screen. It's so easy. We've got about a minute 46 to go with that. Any questions, anybody? Anything in the chat there, Laura? Um, someone was just asking whether you can use normal onions instead of shallots. So I've said yes, but you can use whatever you have. So if you have, um, I don't know, leek or green onions or whatever. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, while that's going, if you want, I can show a few other things that you can. Um, sure. I've got about a minute 16 to go. All right. So, just random other things that you can make in your Thermomix that help save you money. My kids were asking to make Anzac biscuits and I didn't have golden syrup, so that was the main reason I made it, but the cost savings is actually amazing. So I made 370 grams of golden syrup today, which I looked online and this would normally cost $4 um, for that same gram um, measurement. And this cost me 50 cents to make, and that's actually being generous. I think it was more like 40 cents because it's really just water and sugar. So, and I will actually, I'll show you. Uh, first thing, I'll show you the texture because um, I want to make sure you can see how cool it is. It really is a good golden syrup. But that's the same one we use in gingerbread, isn't it, Laura? Yes. So in your gingerbread, I use it in Anzac. Is the best yeah so making your own think like you can think outside the square all these things you could be buying have you could always think how can I make that and if you type into Google thermomix recipe and then whatever you want golden syrup you know I make my vanilla paste tomato paste um, 
like just so many things you can do. Yeah, cookie do is if you've got cookie do, that's the best place to search. But otherwise, um, if you if you're just not sure if the clinics can do it, the answer is usually it can. But um, the yeah, you can Google that. So that's just one other thing. I've got more things I can show you later. But I think Yolanda's ready. Yes, I'm just adding in the arborio rice now. Um, when you're making a risotto, it is a good idea to try and stick to the right amounts of rice and water, simply because you want it to have the right texture. You don't want it to be too thick or too dry or too wet. So if you use the right amount, then you'll be guaranteed of a good result. Arborio rice is the rice we use for risotto. It gives a perfect result. We're going to add in some ripe tomatoes. So I've got them here chopped. And without the measuring cap, we're putting the lid back on. And we're going to cook that at 120 degrees for three minutes. So one of the secrets of making a good risotto is that you need to seal the rice grain. So we're now cooking that rice grain with the herbs and with the oil, and we're going to seal that rice grain. What happens then is the starch doesn't leak out and we don't get a gooey risotto. We get a beautiful textured risotto. And um, that's something that Thermomix does so well. It really is a signature dish for Thermomix. Many of you may have seen mushroom risotto in your original cooking experience when you were looking to buy Thermomix. And that's a dish that we still make here all the time because it's delicious. So um, if you haven't done a Thermomix risotto, give it a go. It's um, cost effective and delicious and the result, you won't be disappointed. Do you agree, Laura? <laughs> I was just replying to someone in the chat. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, uh, what, someone was just asking, what's the name of this recipe? It's from the UK. It's tomato risotto and ricotta lemon stuffed chicken breast. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, just in, if you type that into Cookie Do, I just typed risotto, tomato, chicken. Um, I and think it's, it's a baked chicken collection. Okay, cool. I find uh, it came, so up, came up quite quickly in my Google, but I will be sending all the links um, for that as well. I find personally there's a lot on the UK cookie do that I find delicious. And I find because they're the opposite season to us, if I'm wanting, you know, a new soup or something, and I look in maybe our spring or summer, it's their winter. So... I find um, there's a lot of recipes there that are really palatable to my family. So I always search with my filters on cooking do for the UK. It's always English recipes as well, so I don't have to worry about translation. But I do find there's a lot of choice there and they're delicious. Cool. Oh. All right, while that goes, I can show you another thing that I make in my Thermomix that saves me money. And it's actually, um, I'm gonna get in trouble for this. So I'm not supposed to show you things that are non-food related. So if you all keep a secret, I'm showing you my homemade laundry. But well, I'm not showing you. I'm showing you that I've pre-made it. So this is my laundry powder that I make in the Thermomix. And this costs me $4 to make and it does 30 loads. Now I looked online, it's because I've been making it for years. I didn't even know how much laundry powder cost. Um, that, I wish that you can buy $20 for a 50 load. So, um, so much cheaper to just make it in a thermomix. A little bit, you know, less convenient to be making it rather than grabbing it off the shelf. But if you're looking at saving money, um, that's another thing you can do. You can also make your own liquid soap, which saves a ton of money because the only ingredient is one bar of soap and then a heap of water. It makes like two litres of liquid hand soap. I have done that in the past. I don't have any to show you right now. Um, but yes, I can send the links for those recipes um, when I email you all tomorrow. Just adding a little bit of dry wine. The dry wine really helps to add some lovely flavour, but it also helps with deglazing the bowl, part of the whole risotto making process that makes it super delicious. So just a little bit, 60 grams of dry wine going in there. And then back on again with the measuring cap. This is the bit with the risotto that's, you know, takes a little bit of time initially, two minutes here, three minutes there. But once these bits are done, we've only got a few seconds to go. 
we're going to be cooking for 12 or 13 minutes and we can go away and do something else. And I think the swap will be presented at that stage. One of the next things we're going to add to our recipe is this here. Uh, many of you will know what this is. This is deliciousness in our little container. This is our vegetable stock paste. So it's also a super good money saving ingredient. You'll never again buy liquid stock and you'll never again buy stock cubes. It lasts for months in your fridge. It's full of really nutritious, healthy things, but it tastes fantastic. And it's what makes our soup so good. It's what makes our risottos next level. So don't skip the process of making vegetable stock paste. It's a really good way to use up vegetables in your fridge that might be looking a bit tired. And um, it's also a nice way to use any herbs that you might be growing in your garden. So I think this is a really good ingredient and a great cost saver. Liquid stock's quite expensive. And a tablespoon of this in um, 500 mils will make enough liquid stock to keep you going for a little while. And it's very cost effective. Okay, so now we're going to add some water. 500 mils. Okay, and now the stock paste. And then, and next thing, a little bit of salt. And more black pepper. Just as much as you like. And then a bit of tomato puree, it says, well, for me, as far as I'm concerned, that means tomato paste. That's good enough. Now, scrape down the bottom with your spatula. We've added the water in. We just want to loosen off any rice that might be sitting on the bottom there. Give that a bit of a move around. And then we're going to cook now. One. Now, I have made this before. It doesn't tell me to put the lid on. Um, it doesn't, doesn't actually say in this recipe, Laura. So when I did make it, I did find that as it got hot, there was a bit of bubbling and spluttering. So the way we used to do things with the mushroom risotto was we would put our simmering basket on top just to allow the steam out and to prevent any splattering and um, to prevent anything falling in. So I'm going to choose to do that tonight just so we don't get any, any bubbling and spluttering. Awesome. Thank you, Yolanda. Okay, so we're going to switch over to Jenny now, who's going to make a yummy dessert for us all. Okay, bye. Hi, guys. I hope you're all enjoying tonight. Um, tonight, I'm making a strawberry sorbet dessert and just a little bit of research that I did. So I went on to Woolworths Online and looked up their strawberry uh, sorbet. Now they, and I think Coles would be roughly the same as well, um, they have one kilo of strawberry Weiss uh, summer berry sorbet for $7 a kilo. So today um, my hubby was lovely enough to go to the fruit shop. Uh, he got two punnets of strawberries for $2 each and this is one and about a quarter punnets that's going into this. So for about $2.50 um, and one lemon, uh, we're going to make this sorbet. Now, one of the things that I did with my research, I also looked at what was included in the Weiss sorbet. Now, pre-Thermomix, I was a Weiss girl, so I love their desserts. Um, but what I did notice that it says there's 12% strawberries, they're in their summer fruit sorbet, there's 11% um, raspberries, there's apple puree, glucose syrup, which is made from maize and, and tapioca, and also a cherry juice concentrate, plus vegetable gums and a number of food acids and different colours. So just from a health aspect, we're using some raw sugar tonight, a fresh lemon that's just been peeled, 300 grams of fresh strawberries, oops, I've just lost one, and a kilo of ice I've got here. 
just in my container. So four ingredients, um, which again, you know exactly what's going in this. Now for anybody that's got um, food intolerances or children that have got tummy or gut or even adults with gut and um, tummy issues, one of the things that you will find that a lot of these numbers um, can affect behaviours and people's health. So um, again, I'm not a nutritionist or a dietitian or anything like that, but I have been around Thermomix now. And as a consultant, you do start to venture off and learn more about health and nutrition in that aspect as well. So that was something um, that I was excited to see, um, as well as just learning a little bit. I did a tiny bit of research, um, you know, strawberries at this time of year, you can find them in punnets by the gallon load. Um, so they contain, they're an excellent source of vitamin C, which we all need heading into the winter months and obviously to stave off this big, you know, the new big C word, Corona. Um, they've also got um, folate in them. Um, they're a great source of vitamin B9 and potassium and they're rich in antioxidants. So that's something, you know, just a healthy thing. So when we think of sorbet, we probably think of it as a dessert, but this is almost bordering health food. Um, so I'm going to do the same as Yolanda. I'm going to tip my um, comp uh, screen down so you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing. And the first step that I'm going to do is mill some sugar. Now, when I do that, this is going to be a little bit noisy as well, but for anybody that likes cake decorating, uh, making icing sugar, uh, making icing, icing sugar, buttercream, this next step is going to be quite impressive. If you haven't seen a Thermomix demonstration before, you will see it now. Now, also, I'm, I apologise for the lighting. We don't have the best lighting in our house. So I've got little lamps um, lined up here. So here we go. All right. So this next function is milling. How's that looking? And I'm actually on manual mode. Now, I'll just pop this up to the camera. Um, this recipe is on Cookie Doo. You can see here I've got my Cookie Doo on my mobile. So this is the quick fruit sorbet on Cookie Doo. And you can see there's the uh, ingredients. It serves eight. Now, that would be eight massive serves because this serves over a kilo of sorbet. Um, and you can also do half serves as well. But in any case, I'll just get into it. So this recipe actually calls for 180 grams of sugar. Now, for my family, we've been reducing the sugar content in our food for quite a while. So I've just measured out 100 grams. Now, we can probably even do less than that if our strawberries and fruit is even sweeter. So when you're using fruit, like you could be using mango, you could be doing pineapple, you could be doing apple, orange, um, lemon, you would probably need some more sugar. But for strawberry sorbet tonight, we're going to do, and to keep in line with a little bit of the recipe, 100 grams of sugar. Now I could have flicked the scales and weighed that if we wanted to, but you guys have all seen the weighing in going in. And then we are going to pop the lid on. And all we're going to do now is set the timer 15 seconds. Sorry about my hands there. And um, we are going to go to speed 10 and just blitz our sugar. So this is really now, I don't know if you can see, but it looks like a little bit of smoke coming off the top of my machine, but it's not, it's just powdered sugar. Now that's finished. As you can hear, I've got a nice little tune on my Thermomix there. It reminds me of a Disney princess waving her wand. And can you see this smoke? That's actually powdered sugar. So hopefully you can see how, can you see that? Light and fluffy that is. So that icing, that can be icing sugar. You can use that for your frostings. You can use that for um, sugar syrups, for cocktails. This recipe, you'll see how close you can get to a cocktail. Now I'm just adding in here now a lemon, a whole lemon. All I've done is peeled it and taken it back so the pith is not on there. And I'm going to pop that in. And then I'm going to also add in our fruit. So our 300 grams of strawberries are going in. And I'm going to pop the lid on again. And this time I'm just going to blend this for 10 seconds. So this is just manual mode, 10 seconds and then speed five.
Okay, so for all the ladies and gents out there that love cocktails, this is essentially the base for any cocktail. So as you can see, can you see there, we've got that slushy fruit mixture. So that's typically your sugar syrup and your fruit. Now what we're going to do is pop that back in. I'll just clean that screen up. And we're going to add in our kilo of ice, ice cubes. And you can just use any ice you like. Just make sure it's um, reasonably, you know, like these are actually, I'll just nick one out. For you to see. can you see that size of that ice cube not too big but just whatever comes we've just got a fridge that produces ice so that comes out now I'll pop the lid off and this time we take the measuring cup out and we are going to I'll just fix that up a little bit more we are going to use the spatula now to help us stir this around that goes in under the blades so uh, the spatula has got this little collar so it doesn't go down into the blades and we're going to set this for a minute and a half now I think for the minute and a half, I might actually mute and switch over to Laura because this is quite loud because it's the ice cubes hitting the side of the metal bowl. So what do you think about that, Laura? That's great. I want to, yep, so Jen will do that. I actually want to share screen with you all and show you what Cookie Do is. And I think I can do it in a minute and a half. So this is Cookie Do. This is our online recipe platform, which has thousands and thousands of recipes. Um, you may have seen this particular screen on my TM6 at the beginning of the class. It's the same. On, it's on our device. It's on our phones. It's on, the, on our laptops. It's wherever. So it's just a website and an app. Um, what's great about this is you can just come and type something you want to make. So if you want to make... Okay, this just came into my head. Tuscan bean soup, because this is a really great recipe that's very cost effective for the family. Um, you just type in the recipe. You can come to these three dots and press that you want to cook it today. You could bookmark it, add it to a collection, which is like a filing system for your folders and you can name them whatever you want. So I've, you can see here, these are some of my folders. Um, or you could, my favorite thing, add it to your week. So you could add it to your weekly planner and say, I want to cook this on Thursday night and then just press save. The other thing you can do is add it to your shopping list. And then I will show you how to get your shopping list. It's right here on the side here. Um, so to go into your shopping list, this has changed since last I saw. Um, you can see all the recipes I've put in my shopping list this week. Um, when you go into the list, all the ingredients you need for your whole week's worth of recipes are categorized into the different aisles. So you've got your baking ingredients together, your meats together, your dairies together. So as you're going down the aisles, you just, with your finger in the app, just tick it off. Tick, putting that in the trolley, tick. Putting that in the trolley, tick. So I think the shopping list and the meal planner is an amazing feature of Cookie Do. Another thing you can do instead of searching for a name of a recipe you actually know is go, hmm, I've got a lot of pumpkin because it's an autumn kind of ingredient. Um, what can I make? So I typed in pumpkin and these ingredients have come up. Just quickly, I think I've taken a minute. If I press this filters button, you can choose categories, tags, ingredients, um, and languages. So Yolanda was talking earlier about her recipe was from the UK. So you tick English, take off Australia and show the results. If anyone wants more cookie do help, I, at the end of the whole class, stay on and I can show you in a bit more detail because I think I've taken up my time. Thanks, Laura. So a minute and a half and you can see, hang on, how's that lighting going? We have got over one kilo of fresh sorbet there. Now, again, the kids are home, you wanna give them a nice treat there's nothing wrong with this at all. And you can see this is absolutely beautiful. It's so um, smooth. You can add an egg white if you want to have it that extra bit. Now, mums and dads, if the day has gone a little bit haywire, you can also feel it's completely um, okay if you want to add a little bit of vodka or Bacardi to that and make that a little adult slushy. Otherwise, it's a beautiful sorbet for you and the kids to enjoy um, as we go into these 
you know, homeschooling afternoons, for afternoon tea or a nice treat on the weekend, something like that. So you're welcome to um, enjoy. Oh, I've got some terrible lighting going on. But anyway, in any case, um, I'm going to enjoy this one. Thank you. So that's so awesome. Thank you, Jen. And I will just, and the leftovers can be frozen. Someone's just asked in the chat, leftovers can be frozen. It does harden a little bit in the freezer. When you take it out, um, you could either re-whip it or just leave it out for a minute. Oh, we don't usually have leftovers in my family. We're a family of six, but sometimes if I do, I'll put it in ice block molds in the freezer. So the next time they just eat it as an ice block. Okay, so I'm gonna show you quickly the scrolls that have just come out of the oven while Jen was making that sorbet. And hopefully, let me just take that. You can see there, they're nicely yummy cooked. A whole big batch of scrolls that my kids can eat tomorrow. I'm sorry you can't taste them. They smell amazing. And I think um, Yolanda is ready to show us the rest of her risotto. Are you there, Yolanda? Nope, we're, oh, yeah. I think she's busy doing something. Okay, um, we, okay. Were, oh. Sorry about that, I had to run to the oven. Oh yeah, that's okay. Are you ready now or should we go to Nat? You could, do you want me to plate it up or just show you how it looks on the tray? Oh, just show us how it looks and then um, you can plate it up while Nat does hers and you can show us after. All right, so the risotto, I've just stirred through the cheese and I've um, added in also some butter. Oh, I don't know if you can see without it coming out, maybe not. I might need to scoop some up. It's got lovely big pieces of the tomato in it. Can you see? Might be a bit hard to show. Yeah, no, we can see it. Yeah, it's a really nice texture. It's got beautiful, it might be easier if I put it in a bowl. Yeah, you plate that up while Nat does her segment and we'll come back to you. Okay. Okay, so Nat is going to make show us how you can make some pantry staples that a lot of families are buying every week. So are you there, Nat? Hi, I'm here. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, for those that don't know me, I'm Nat, and I've been a consultant for oh, about a year and a half now, I think. Um, so tonight I'm going to make some peanut butter, and I'm going to make some hazelnut chocolate spread, also known as Nutella. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to start with the Nutella and then I'll do the peanut butter after that. So I've got it saved. I'm just going to move my screen down a bit. Can you all see that? Um, I've saved it into my week. So I'm making the hazel chocolate, chocolate, hazelnut chocolate spread. So I'm just going to hit start cooking. And I've got 150 grams of hazelnuts with the skin on. Now, I actually buy all my nuts from a um, wholesaler. I do factory outlet tours um, in the Christmas shopping month. So I get all my nut supplies cheap from the, um, the, the factory outlet. So um, I'm just gonna mill these hazelnuts. It's gonna be a little bit noisy. That's okay. That was a long 30 seconds. <laughs> so, my hazelnuts have all been milled down now. And I'll just see if I can show you. No longer are they hazelnuts. Okay, now it says raw cacao powder, but I actually just use cocoa. 
because we like chocolate in my house, so we're going to use chocolate tonight. So there's 40 grams, and that's Cadbury um, cocoa because we don't like the cheap stuff. <laughs> Although I'm supposed to be showing the cheap stuff, so you can get the um, the Coles brand for like four dollars. But um, I sort of sport my kids from the start with the Cadbury's brand, so that's what we do. <laughs> um, and then maple syrup, um, I actually rip my kids off and I just use um, flavoured maple syrup so they don't need to know. <laughs> they taste the same, they have no idea. It's cheaper. There's 100 grams. And then 100 grams of milk. Not a litre like I did earlier when I practised. <laughs> lid on and another 30 seconds it won't be as loud this time I'm just going to scrape the sides down. And then I'll show you what it looks like at the moment. It's a really nice chocolatey gooey mess. I'm just going to put the lid back on again. And it's going to go for a minute this time on speed six. So, I don't know if you guys can hear me, but I was looking at the prices of Nutella earlier. And for the big one, it's like $10. And that's just crazy. So, um, this one, I actually haven't worked out the maths, but the hazelnuts, they cost me like $8 for a big bag. It's like, I think it's a kilo bag that I get. So, I pay $8 at the factory outlet, which is super cheap. Um, the cocoa, if you want to get the cheap one, is like $4 for, I can't find it, I think it's half a kilo. Um, and the maple syrup, it's only a couple of dollars from memory. That's the packet that I use there, so I don't know how big it is. Oh, 250 grams. And then what else is there? And milk. Milk's like, what, $2, $3, depending what size you get. Um, and of course, we don't use the whole packet at a time. So um, I can say I come in well under $10 for a Nutella. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's so much healthier for the kids as well because there's no palm oil in it and whatever else they're putting in Nutella. Um, as you can see, there's no oil in this one. And so now it's like a really really good chocolatey gooey mess, which is what we all like Nutella for. And I'm just gonna pour it into a container. That looks delicious, no? It is. I've got about three tubs at the moment because I've been practicing. <laughs> <laughs> Finding the exact, um, for everyone, um, at home, Nat's been trying out the different recipes there are to uh -huh. find which one's the best. So That's what it looks like and it's so much nicer than Nutella. You can actually taste the hazelnuts in this. Um, yeah, we've got, I have got um, the cheaper one, the cheaper brand of Nutella here um, but it's, it's not as good as this one. So once you've had this, you won't go back to the old stuff. Delicious. So what I would do now, if you all things from Kmart for $2. <laughs> oh, yeah, the containers. Um, what I would do is add some milk yes. and make a nice hot chocolate, hazelnut flavoured. Um, but while Nat washes her bowl and gets ready for her next 
she's going to show us peanut butter next. Yeah. Maybe Yolanda can just show us the risotto plated up. Are you there, Yolanda? I sure am. Um, I think it might be easier if I tip up my iPad. I've just plated one up as it... Oh, can you see? Maybe... Is that working? Can you see or not? Yeah. Laura? Yeah, you can good? see that now. Okay. Um, and I've also prepared one for lunch, which I can easily show you this way. So my lunch tomorrow is already prepped in the container, good to go, delicious, because I'm going to be hungry when I'm at work all day. So I love this because it makes a big feed. It's beautiful. Um, we tested this out last Friday and we both thought that mushroom, sorry, the tomato risotto was a really nice change. Something I meant to say when I was cooking, if you're a vegetarian, you could still make the ricotta filling but you could use it to dollop on top of roasted eggplants or roasted capsicums or big mushroom caps instead of chicken. And you could still proceed and make the mushroom risotto. So don't look at this recipe and think it's not for me because it's chicken, I don't eat chicken. Just think outside the box a bit and think, well, what else could I do with that lovely ricotta lemon parsley filling that would go nicely with a tomato risotto? Thank you so much. It looks delicious. And before when I said I could see it, I could actually see that container. Do you mind just holding up the plate a little bit? We couldn't it's actually fine. see the plate. Yeah. I know you've gone to effort to plate it up nicely. Yeah, that's a bit better. Thank oh, you. Sliding off the plate is all. Oh, there you go. But yeah, that's better. Thank you. I want to go sliding into the iPad. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Of course. Awesome. Thanks, Yolanda. So we're going to go back to Nat, who's going to show us how to make peanut butter quickly. And then we've got one more thing to make. Um, we should be wrapped up hopefully by around nine o'clock. Um, yeah, I hope you're enjoying our class so far. Okay, I'm back. Yep. All right, so I'm going to make the peanut butter now. So I'll... Sorry, I muted myself. <laughs> okay. So again, I've already saved it into my week my cookie dough and this recipe is so easy I've been making this for a while actually now that I've had my thermomics for over two years now so um and the kids actually prefer my peanut butter to the store-bought peanut butter so I'm just gonna hit start cooking so it's 200 grams of peanuts I use salted peanuts because um let's face it peanut butter tastes better with salt in it and I don't have to worry about adding salt and adding too much or too little. The salt's already on the peanuts. So I tip those in. Now I'm gonna be milling up the, um, chopping up the peanuts. And just before I add in the oil, I'll just show you that they're all fairly chopped up in there. I use, um, I use peanut oil. It says you can use peanut or grapeseed oil. Um, from trialing it a few times, I found that peanut oil works better than the grapeseed oil. That's for my family, it does. Um, they don't like the grapeseed oil taste. Um, so I use the peanut oil. So I've just mixed the peanuts and oils together. Um, and it's quite crunchy, so I prefer a smoother peanut butter. So I do it for a little bit longer. And I just check for the top. I just check for the top of the lid just to um, check for the consistency. The other thing you can do, can you guys hear me? Yep. 
um, if you didn't want to make peanut butter or there's a peanut allergy, you can make cashew butter, you can make almond butter. You can use any kind of nut that you want. It doesn't have to be peanut um, peanut butter, so which is really, it's really cool. There's a lot of peanut allergies out there. I'm just going to check because it sounds like it might be ready. And oh, nice spatula there. Well, as you can see, that's pretty much how we like it in my house. You could go a little bit longer if you want to make it a bit smoother, but um, the kids actually like the little bit of the crunchy nuts through it. So um, that will do us for tonight. Um, and um, I think that's all I really have to say. That is awesome. Thank you so much, Nat. Thank you. Um, such a great example to make your own pantry staples in your Thermomix, saving you money. Um, so we have the lovely Rhonda now who's going to show us another delicious dish, another thing that you can really save money. Actually, when I bought my Thermomix, um, I was buying rice milk and coconut milk and I calculated on making my own rice milk and coconut milk alone that I'd pay off my Thermomix um, a lot, like, quick just on those two things and um Rhonda's going to show us how to make almond milk but um yeah so here she is it, hopefully she's there somewhere are you there Rhonda I'm here can you hear me okay um hi I'm Rhonda I've been in the business since um September, I bought my first Thermomix in 2007 and I worked in a cafe where we made almond milk, coconut milk, cashew milk and a combination of all every day. And this is where I um, felt that um, I had to spend money on a Thermomix because the punishment we put it through, it lasts and I thought, well, that's why it's worth its money. So um, what you do is you take one cup of um, almonds or any nuts, whether it's cashews, each different ones, whether it's coconut, um, cashew has a different soaking time. So let's just work on the almonds. So one cup of almonds um, into some water and soak it overnight, a minimum of 12 hours. And you will see um, on this spoon, I have um, a almond that hasn't been soaked, and an almond that has been soaked. And I'm not sure if you can see, but the almonds double in size. And so we're gonna add the um, soaked rinsed almonds. So rinse them. If you, if you decide that you can't make it um, the next morning or 12 or more hours after you planned, just keep rinsing them and keep them refrigerated. And you can keep them like that for a couple of days. Uh, and then make it. So I'm just going to say, so you can see the almonds have doubled in size. So we've gone from one cup to almost two cups of almonds by soaking them. We're going to put that into our thermomix. I'm doing this manually. There are recipes you can follow, but because I've been doing it for a while, I um, manual's fine for me. And then we're going to add a litre of water, or we can weigh it with our scales and do a thousand grams. And if you want to drink it straight away, add some ice. Um, otherwise it will get uh, quite warm in the process. So we're just gonna add this in. There we go, look at that. That doesn't happen very often that I get the uh, 1,000. And then it's three minutes on nine, speed nine, and which um, I prepared one earlier. So I'm just going to spare you that three minutes and take you to the next step. So once it's blended for three minutes, I then take a vessel of some sort, but in this case, I'm using um, my TM5 bowl and my um, skimmer basket, I'm gonna put it in there. So you can purchase a nut milk bag, which looks like this, but you could also use a, a muslin cloth or even a chucks, a, a brand new chucks. 
uh, just to line a bowl to strain it. And then you will put it in and pour your mixture into it after it's blended for three minutes. And then uh, you can let it drain. And then you will bring your bag up or cloth, whichever you have, and squeeze it. You are left with some almond meal in the bag and then your milk will be in the jug. The almond meal isn't a waste product. I mean, my chooks love it, so I don't get to use it. But in the cafe, we used it in muffins, in cakes, in biscuits. Um, you can use it in smoothies. Um, it's not a waste product. So you're using the whole almond, but you do get your almond milk. When you buy an almond milk, if you look on the side, you're looking at around 5%, 3 to 5% almonds. When you make it yourself like this, you're looking at about 25%. Um, the litre will make over a litre of milk. I choose to use um, two vessels to store my almond milk in. Posada jars are fantastic for recycling and using for your almond milk. Uh, the, obviously the litre will um, overflow uh, one of these jars. You can use jar one or, and an extra jar. Um, but these um, Barambam uh, milk bottles, which are recyclable, are fantastic for making a one-to-one -one mix and it fits in this and it's a plastic lid and I love it. But you can use, you can store it in anything. Just make sure you're sterilizing it. So this brings us to my next, um, once I have my almond milk, I decided I might make a, an iced coffee. Now there is a coffee going around at the moment under two names. One's a, a you can call it whipped coffee or a Dalgona coffee. And um, to make that, what you do is you uh, get your Thermomix and you insert your whisk. I've got it in here already. You insert your whisk into your bowl. You can add two tablespoons of coffee, uh, just a granulated coffee, two tablespoons of sugar, and two tablespoons of water, whether it's ice cold or hot. There's conflicting recipes. I've just got uh, room temperature water in here. And then you blend it at speed four, because this is a manual one, for three minutes. Because I've already whisked this uh, once already, go back to my home screen. Um, it won't take as long, so we can just um, do a touch-up whisk. So I'm just going to turn this, the dial to speed four and uh, let it touch up. Meanwhile, I'm going to get some almond milk that I've prepared earlier into my glass. So this is the size container that took the leftover from the um, Posada jar. And I'm just going to pour some into here. So we might have an iced coffee, so we can add some ice. This is such a fun recipe and it just is very impressive. And um, it's different from having your normal cappuccinos. So I'm just going to stop that because I did whisk this up earlier. So you know, you can start it and then come back to it and just get it ready when your guests arrive or whenever you want to have it. And I don't know if you can see in here, but you can see it all whisked up. Uh, trying to grab the light on it, but um, we're just gonna grab some out and we're gonna throw, put this on top of our, our milk. You can see how it sits on top. And then, so this will make about four serves. So feel free to muck around with the um, uh, mixtures. So long as you've got coffee and water, it will froth up like this. You do not need the sugar. So you can sweeten your milk instead of sweeten the coffee. Um, but so long as you've got the coffee and water and a thermo mix, it will mix up. And so here you can see the different colours and the layers. And the idea is, if you have it hot or cold, you start stirring the coffee into it. So it's sort of like 
you know, it's, it's sensual and it's a game and it's just fun to play with. And then you just taste it and mm, it is so yum. And you can mix the coffee in as much as you like or just, you know, have a bit of milk or have more coffee. Um, it's just fantastic. It's, it's just one step up from a cappuccino and eating that chocolate off the top. But you could put chocolate on top of this too if you like. So, well, that's me done, Laura. Thank you. That just looks so fun. That looks amazing. It is. And these recipes are on um, Cookie Doo, both the almond milk and the Delgona coffee. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just simple. You, don't, you can do it on your own with your uh, Thermomix as well. Awesome. Thank you. What's the question? Where did you get the glass milk container from? And I assume she doesn't mean the Posada one. Um, well, this is, um, Barambam is actually a, an organic milk um, company. Uh, so from an organic store that supplies them, you can buy the milk from there and uh, keep the bottle or you can send them back and they recycle them. Great. Thank so, you. But, I don't know if you can see the label on. Uh, not really. <laughs> I might send, add that in the email tomorrow. It's going to be a long email. I hope you're all okay with that. So that is the, um, they're all the dishes we wanted to make. I will just point out, um, as I mentioned at the, early, at the beginning of the evening, there are several different reasons why people invest in a Thermomix. And tonight we really only covered that cost saving um, element. But hopefully while we were going along, you saw how quick things were as, you know, time is one of the biggest factors that Aussie families want these days. Um, and how you can make your healthy dishes as well. Um, but yeah, the cost saving for tonight, if you're looking to use your Thermomix to save at least $16.30 a week, I would recommend you looking at your last grocery receipt and going through and seeing what you can make in the Thermomix and um, work out with your consultant how you can do it and what your cost savings would be. I once had an accountant's wife come to me and say she needed to definitely balance the book each week. So we went through and we went through the almond milk, the yogurt, the bread, um, whatever it was to add up to the $16 because right now we have 36 months interest free. It is $16.30 a week. If you want, you can pay it off sooner by doing extra payments or making your payments higher. That's your choice. Um, yeah, so if you, the other thing, other cost savings are cutting out takeaway, as you saw how quick and easy it is to make main dishes. You can cut out your takeaway. You can save money on your energy bill. The Thermomix is very cost effective to run. It compares with one of those um, energy saver fridges that you just keep, keep on. So um, e even at its absolute highest, it costs about 18 cents an hour to run. Most dishes take only 20 minutes. So you can see how cheap it is to run on your electricity bill. Um, the other way to save money is by cutting out our waste. Because we're using our weekly planner and shopping list, we're buying just what we need rather than extra ingredients. You can use extra veggies and whatever by um, making that veggie stock paste or, you know, there's lots of ways to use your leftover ingredients each week. So you can talk to your consultant about that. Um, yes, if you want, if you have other further questions, Please stay on, um, ask me whatever. I can show you cookie dough again or I can show you something on the screen of the Thermomix. There's heaps of modes we didn't even get to tonight. There really is a lot to know about a Thermomix. If you want to know more, please also speak to your consultant. We're doing these virtual sort of cooking nights for the next period of time while we're all in our homes, staying safe. So please talk to your consultant about that. Support them. If you have friends who are interested in just an hour of sitting back on the couch and watching us cook in our Thermomix, um, that would be a great night for you. It would be helpful for us to spread the word of the Thermomix at this time while we are, can't go out of our homes. Um, there are host rewards that you can benefit from as well that Yolanda was talking about earlier. And at the moment, I forgot to say, um, there is a promotion. Anyone who buys a Thermomix right now also gets a free Thermo server, which... I'm actually resting my laptop on one, so bear with me. Our thermo server keeps our food hot for a couple of hours. 
or frozen cold for a couple of hours. Um, it's double insulated stainless steel. Lots of great things you can do with your server. I'll add that in the email tomorrow. And our Eat Well book, which is out on loan for me at the moment, but the great got on offer at the moment. Thermomix doesn't often throw in freebies, but they are at the moment. So it's a really great time to get a Thermomix on your bench. While we're all at home, it's, it's time to cook um, and save money and, you know, use ingredients that we have rather than having to worry about we can't source certain ingredients right now. So, yes, thank you, everyone. And thanks to our team of consultants. We've gone four minutes over, but I hope you've enjoyed this evening. I will send out that email. If you have extra questions, please um, reply to my email tomorrow. Um, I'm always happy to help, even if I'm not your consultant. Um, I just love talking about the Thermomix so much. It's helped my life so much. And I just love sharing it with people. So please feel free to get in touch. Um, and then even now, as people are leaving, feel free to ask further questions and stay back on for a minute. Hi. So we just did a cooking class all around saving money. And I forgot to press record at the beginning of the meeting. And I'm actually really annoyed about that because it was, um, there were lots of really helpful tips happening there. Um, and when I pressed record, it was a little bit of the way through the lovely consultant Yolanda's presentation of making a delicious looking risotto um, with chicken. Now I, in the cooking class, I made this dough um, I was making three cheese and spinach scrolls and because I had prepared one earlier and just left this dough to rise Even though the class has just finished I've got this dough ready to make and I was going to be doing it anyway So I thought since I didn't get to record it I will show you how to do this because Once you see how it's done, it's really easy to do yourself. So I'm going to move the screen down So I've got my dough here. That's just been rising now. This recipe is on cookie dough. It is a very basic dough recipe it's um, flour, water, oil, yeast, and salt. And um, it, it only takes one minute of kneading. Um, so add, so it's first, it's two minutes of activating the yeast in some water at 37 degrees. You do that on the Thermomix. Then you add the flour and knead it just for one minute. And then set it aside to rise for about half an hour. Um, that's really all it needs and then you get to this point which I'm doing now is rolling it out into a rectangle and I'm going to add toppings so when you make this dough you could make it into this is a it's a really basic dough you could do this into a loaf um, a cob you could do it into pizza Focaccia, focaccia actually needs more water, but really very similar process. Um, what else? Um, scrolls is what we're doing now. So, sorry, I was just going to my spatula. So I'm just going to put in the spinach. Now we chopped this in the Thermomix. It only takes a few seconds and it just goes on. I'm spreading that around. If you didn't want spinach and cheese scrolls, here's where you could add whatever. So cheese and pineapple, cheese and bacon, cheese and Vegemite. Cheese is the key because it melts so yummily into it all. Um, even just cheese and herbs, like you don't actually need much. Um, you could do a whole mix of antipasto or sun-dried tomatoes or whatever. Now this is a three cheese mix of parmesan, tasty and mozzarella. You could just use whatever you've got. You can just use cheddar, it doesn't matter. As I said, cheese is the key. Anything else goes and you don't have to follow the recipe. Same with any, well, a lot of the recipes in the Thermomix, you don't always have to follow the recipe exactly. You can substitute out for what your family like. So I'm just covering the cheese over the top. Now I normally, obviously I've washed my hands, but I normally just pat it down a bit so that the cheese and the spinach really stick into that dough. And I'm going to use my spatula. The spatula is flexible enough to scrape out of the Thermomix bowl, but sturdy enough to cut our dough on our mat. 
So I'm going to just cut some strips. At this point in this long rectangle, you could roll the whole thing up as one big scroll and then cut it once it's a scroll. But I actually think these look better when I just cut up individual strips and scroll them each. And because I've done it a, quite a bit, I don't find it takes too much time. I often actually get the children to do this. And that's one of the other great things about the Thermomix is that the children can do the cooking with you or for you. Because of the guided cooking on the screen, it tells them what to do at every step. You can't really mess it up. Um, the scales are there to show you what you're putting in. Everything's easy. So I'm almost done. I'm getting 12 out of this. Often I do 15. Um, it just depends how big or small you want the scrolls to be. And then we've got our strips. It's just a matter of rolling them up. And this dough is so easy to work with. It doesn't stick to our mat. Um, if you had a dough that was sticking to your surface, you can use your spatula to help you sort of push it as you roll it and kind of scrape it off the surface. I don't, I'm not going to do that for tonight. I find it quicker with my fingers, but I just wanted to show you that. Um, they just go on the tray, um, face up, which I'll show you once I've done them all, and into a cold oven. So often doughs need two risers or two proofs. Um, our first proof was done in the silicon mat for half an hour, as I mentioned a minute ago. And this one, and so often you would then leave it another rise and then put it in a hot oven. This recipe asks it to go into a cold oven. So you put it in the oven and straight away, you put it in and turn it on. And while the oven is preheating, your rolls are rising for their second rise. Um, so it's just a really good energy efficient way to make your scrolls. And I will show you what they look like when they come out of the oven as well. Um, but here's our scrolls on the tray. And I just gather up all the leftover bits and sprinkle them on top. So there's our scrolls. I do flatten them down because in the oven they puff back up again. It's just another little tip to help make them nice and soft. Um, I'll just sprinkle this on and pop them in the oven. So yeah, these rolls, like if you're buying a cheese and bacon roll, um, it's more a bakery, but I took Woolworths prices just to compare to a supermarket that I think is more every day. Um, it's about a dollar to a dollar fifty per roll for like a cheese and bacon roll, or they don't often have cheese and spinach, but you know this type of thing. Whereas this whole batch is a dollar fifty to make for the whole batch. So what, the dough is around eighty cents, and then it's a matter of your toppings. So I've added that cost for the cheese and the spinach. So I'm putting that into a cold oven and turning it on. If you bear with me, I'll do that. And when they're done, out of the oven, I just, this was the batch I just pulled out of the oven. When they're done, they look like that and they're all nice and light on the inside. Hopefully you can see that light and fluffy texture there and crispy on top with the cheese. So that's our cheese and spinach scrolls. So thanks for watching.